Hi there and welcome. Now before we start, don't forget, go below, hit the subscribe button and hit the little bell beside you to get notifications of when I upload videos in the future. And also, if you enjoy this video, don't forget to press the thumbs up and give it a like. You know, it's always difficult to think of projects to shoot. Sometimes inspiration just does not come. Other times, your head seems to positively overflow with ideas. Wednesday of this week was not one of those days. I met up with my daughter in Penrith, a market town in Cumbria at the top of the Lake District National Park, where I was to follow her for the 17 miles along the A66 to her home in Brough. Now, I had challenged my sister to take some photographs of something historic for her project on our photo course, Take Better Photos, which is available on this channel. And when I mentioned that, my challenge was issued. It's half an hour or so drive to Brough from Penrith, but I was given an hour and a half to get there with the brief to find something historic which you can see from the road along the route and photograph it or anything of interest you can see from it. But don't be late. No maps, no information, just my eyes, which also had to be used to concentrate my driving. No sooner had I left the town when I saw my first point of interest off to my right, the wonderful 13th century Broom Castle, in the picturesque setting of the banks of the River Emont, where it meets the River Lowther. The centre point is the Great Keep, which largely survives and is surrounded by other buildings including the Tower of League and an unusual double gatehouse. Now again, as noted in some of my other videos of late, we are in the middle of a lockdown at the moment, which means that many of the places are severely limited in access, and Broom Castle is no different. As a photographer, this severely limits the variety of shots available. The grounds were closed and locked, so close-ups were not an option. Although I do have several excellent cameras, my standard travel kit comprises of my trusty, and battered, Olympus OMD EM1 Mark I, and a selection of Lumix and Olympus lenses. I rarely take pro lenses out on trips like this, mainly to save weight and size, so my pack is a Lumix 7-14mm, a Lumix 12-60mm, an Olympus 45-150mm, and a Lumix 100-300. On this occasion, I also had the wonderful and tiny Olympus 45mm 1.8 Prime. Love it. Even though I was shooting from the road, the view of the castle was majestic with its buildings shadowing it. The river at this point is really pretty as it meanders away to the right as we follow its path westwards. It proved an asset for the castle dwellers as they repelled the Scots many centuries ago. The river providing a natural barrier and an open stretch to observe the enemy as they neared. The bridge over the river is totally in fitting with the aesthetics of the castle, which is three wide and low arches and strong buttress supports. Driving to the rear of the castle toward the village of Amon Bridge, it's hard to believe that we're only a mile or so from the centre of the busy town of Penrith. Looking back towards the castle from this road, we can clearly see the derelict Tower of League mentioned previously. The castle, once a prestigious home and military base to Robert Clifford, 1st Baron de Clifford, was an important frontline outpost, and in 1300 was visited by King Edward I of England. Built on the previous site of a Roman fort called Brocavum, the castle is now listed as an ancient monument. Back into the car again and heading east along the main road, my mind was swayed towards stopping into the town of Appleby, home of the Gypsy Traveller's famous horse fair. I was just about to turn off when I remembered the rules. Historic items I can see from the road. In my haste, I passed a number of other items while set and going into Appleby, but of course, I cannot see the town from the road. Now, time and opportunities were running out as I continued towards the army training range at Walkup. Glancing to my right where some army personnel were doing some training on the sport field, I spotted it. The railway line, and more importantly, the Sandstone Railway Bridge. As I said in the last video, 
These items of everyday architecture were once the gems of an industrial revolution. Now, being from the northeast of England, near Newcastle, railways are an intrinsic part of my upbringing, with stories of pioneers of steam railways, the father and son team of George and Robert Stevenson, having the infamous railway manufacturing works at Elswick in the west of Newcastle. Even more important for me was that they lived in Willington Quay, part of my hometown of Wall's End. This single span bridge is now a disused part of the line, very close to the infamous set of the Carlisle railway line. Now, I find these structures fascinating as they are both utilitarian and extremely attractive due to their use of well-dressed local stone. They really suit being shot with a very wide angle lens to emphasise the sweeping shape of their arches that crosses the little road into the village. As you will know by now, if you've seen any of my other videos, I love the use of wide angle lenses in architectural shoots. My style is to allow the distortion and allow building lines to draw the eye further into the shot. Now, this often flies in the face of the purists. But I believe that a creative photographer is allowed to break any of the conventional rules to create an artistic statement and develop their own style. If you like it, just do it. I often look along the roads which feed towards these structures, disappearing off into the distance and wonder what lies at the other end? What's just over that hill? But on this journey, that question will have to remain unanswered as I'm running out of time. Brough is only a couple of miles away, but I have an ace up my sleeve. There is another beautiful ruined castle in Brough itself. Ideal! It can clearly be seen from the road as I turn into the town, and so I head south for only a couple of hundred metres and to the turn off towards the farm. Now the last time I had been here was a year and a half ago, and I spent a lovely half hour eating some homemade ice cream in the castle picnic area. Alas, not only was the ice cream parlour closed because of the pandemic, so was the castle. My only view was from the gate where I looked upon the sad and forlorn picnic table tables I had rested upon previously. To say I was disappointed was an understatement, and with that disappointment went my photo challenge. I turned back towards the car, dejected, only to see straight in front of me the lovely 12th century church of St Michael's. Built in 1150 as a daughter church to the nearby Kirby Stephen, its earliest part of the 67 foot long south wall, a window in the westernmost bay of the wall, and the main doorway with its distinctive Norman period beakhead and chevrons. The majority of the church was completed in the 14th and 16th centuries, with the oak roof dating from the latter period, with a part of the north side possibly dating earlier. The aisle and eastern chapel date from the 14th century. Although the church is closed at the moment, where to gain entry, you would see on the floor near the stone pulpit a tombstone, memorialising Gabriel Vincent. Gabriel was steward to Lady Anne Clifford in the 17th century, and it was she who restored the nearby castle. In fact, Gabriel died in the Roman tower of the castle. And so, back to the car, and just in time to meet up with my daughter and pick up my young granddaughter from nursery, the real reason for my journey. Who says you cannot be inspired to take photos even on a mundane journey? Just open your eyes and see what's around. If you've enjoyed this video, then can I ask you to do a simple task for me? Below the video you'll see a subscribe link. Please click it to see many more videos and if you click on the bell symbol beside it you'll receive notifications whenever I post something new. Even better, if you click the thumbs up to like the video it tells YouTube to promote it to more people so they will get the opportunity to see some of the North of England and South Scotland's amazing heritage through the eyes of a local photographer. Even better, it costs you nothing more than a couple of seconds to do it and it means so much to me. Thanks for watching. Thank you.